Hello people of YouTube, my name is Brad, this is my channel Anima Orange, and welcome to part one of the Iconics, very colorful Hogwarts Express build that I have right here. This is the completed model. In this video, we're going to get started, we're going to go, as usual, open up the package, take a look at what's inside, see what we're up against, and begin building this model. So let's go to the table, open up the package of this beautiful Iconics model, and well, get started building. And here we have a Hogwarts Express with a little bit of the metal poking out the top. So I'm going to need to grab my scissors for one. Kind of tap this down. It doesn't want to go. Do not want to accidentally cut the metal. Huh. It does not want to get out of the way. Bedding this got glued into place. This is not the first time this has happened, but it does not happen often. We're going to have to do some surgery to get this one out. Slightly glued into the packaging. All right, so we got one metal sheet out. We've got two metal sheets. This did not come out cleanly. We've got three metal sheets. Rather colorful. I'm gonna try and. Carefully place them to the side. All right, let's look at the instructions. I'm going to start with the one that has the Metal Earth logo on it. Open this up and briefly go over the iconic instructions, which are very similar to Metal Earth but slightly different. You have your Metal Earth and Iconics logo. You have a 360 view, you can either scan this QR code or go to this website to see a completed model. I haven't yet checked to see if it's up, but it should be. We have a line drawing of the model. We have a sample piece over here, a sample part. The notation of slots, fold lines, and tabs. They don't really have notations to go with this, but you know, tabs eventually go into a slot to hold things together. Fold lines are just pre-scored areas to help fold things. And actually this fold line is not pointing at a fold line, it is pointing at a slot. Interesting. The, the fold lines would actually be these pieces shape in the box here, I'm assuming, because that would... Fold lines are just usually where a part is scored so that it'll fold easier. That is a bit misleading. It should be pointing either here or here. And not here. <laughs> that is a slot. But anyway, below that we have the legend. E is the engraved or colored side. NE is the non-engraved or silver side. Basically the detailed side versus the non-detailed side. And it can be easy to get the details mixed up with what are essentially fold lines. Attention point. You see this little hand pointing at something. It's usually trying to get your attention as far as how something aligns. Occasionally there may be some other reason why, but it usually has to do with alignment of tabs and slots and how parts come together. If you get alignment wrong, sometimes later things will not connect properly. Blue circle and green triangle have to do with how you connect tabs in their slots. Blue circle means to insert a tab in a slot folded over 90 degrees. Green triangle is insert the tab in a slot and twist it 90 degrees. Assembly tip, if needed, slightly twist tabs to hold the parts together, then untwist and bend them down for a nice finish. Occasionally use that trick when it's a shaky part and I just need to get things together first before I fold them over. Recommended tools, we'll talk about tools here in a moment. Below that we have one of the metal sheets. I don't see that metal sheet. I missed that metal sheet. 
There we go. The little tiny metal sheet is all the way down on the bottom. We have teeny tiny little gold and slightly colored sheet here. And this is an outline of this sheet as an example of, oh, well, this is where the parts are. You got all the parts numbers pointing at the parts. You'll notice that this sheet's a bit odd. The entire sheet is kind of grayed, but you have some parts that are colored in and some parts that are plain white. And the parts that are colored in are the same part, like the same color of the same part. So this purplish one here is the same as these two purplish pieces. One of them is labeled 91, but they're all part 91. But these clear white parts are not the same part. They're all different. They've added gray. They don't normally fill in the sheet gray. That kind of makes it a little more confusing. We move over to this part, this sheet. See if I can't find a another example to clarify what I'm talking about. I believe we have this sheet here. Also note it says sheet B here at the top. And over here it was sheet A. So all the sheets have a letter and the parts on them have a number. And that makes finding the things easier. So here we've got several of these blue wheels, all of these blue wheel pieces are all the same piece they're all the same color whereas these wheel pieces are different colors and different pieces but again all the same part to each other so these are all part nine actually there's a slightly different shade between these two and these two so these would both be part nine these would be something else i think 11 which is labeled over here that's part nine because it's the same as that the colored parts are only labeled once with a number, but they're duplicate parts, so you just find the same shape and color, and that finds the other duplicate part. I mean, it's a train, it's got several wheels, so why give them all a different part number? We have sheet C and D down here. There's quite a lot of sheets to this model, a lot of parts to reference. We jump over to page three, and we start, no, wait, did I miss? I don't know. Step one actually starts down at the bottom of the first page. So this is a little mixed up. Step one, we start with piece one off of sheet D. So we'd have to come over to D, find part one, wherever it is. Right here, clip that part out. Back over here, we've got part two. We need to clip that part out, showing you which side is the non-engraved side and how to shape and fold the sides. That connects here with folded over tabs according to the blue circles. And then we have part 3B, which you shape into a square. There's four of those. And here's all four of them connected with twisted tabs here. You slide over here, the red indicates the piece is being folded over. The blue line and arrow kinds of indicates how it's folded over. Slide over here, and there's more pieces folded down being connected with fold it over tabs and you end up with this part. A lot of information in a small area that shows you how to get part or the first step done. Big difference between Metal Earth instructions and Iconics is they have steps and those steps are often called back to later on. Flip over to page two and we have step two, or excuse me, page three, we have step two. We're recalling step one. There's a ton of information loaded into step two, and it took me a second to decipher it, but you have this assembly here. Here's the sub-assembly for that, which has this sub-assembly here of part six, which is shaped like that, added over here, seven and eight add to that. To end up with this, you bring this back over here to connect to this part you built over here. So it can get a little complicated with the sub-assemblies. You just take your time to work it out and follow through the steps and the sub-assemblies putting things together. Step three, step four, just continue on. Over here is page four. Once you get to done with step six, you come over here. And once you're done with the first sheet, you grab the next sheet, open it up and find the next step and keep going forward until you're finished with the model. Let's talk a little bit about tools. The very basics of what you're gonna need is a pair of tweezers 
and some clippers. The tweezers, you can do a lot of bending, shaping, twisting of tabs, folding of things over. The clippers are going to help you get the pieces out of the sheets cleanly and easily by clipping them out instead of trying to bend them out, which can cause damage. I've also supplemented my set with some precision tweezers. I have a couple of pointed ones here. One, I ground the tip down just a little bit to give it a more sturdy tip for tabs and twisting things. And then I have a precision flat set. And between all of these, I can do a lot of bending and shaping and twisting. I also strongly recommend some sort of pliers to complement your set. I have some flat nose here that have definite uses. I have some long needle nose pliers for some of the longer pieces and then I have some curved tips for grabbing things at an angle and bending them over. For shaping a lot of curves and dome shapes and whatnot you'll see me use an array of 3D printed tools that I've designed that you can find on my Etsy if you're interested. Otherwise I've, you'll also see me pull out a cheap drill bit set that I have that's not sharp for shaping cylinder shapes or just look around your house and use objects that you find like dowel rods, pencils, maybe some beads to shape certain things. All right, we've talked a little bit about tools. We've got a lot here on the table to get organized. I'm going to move all these metal sheets off to one side and line them up in order, get my tools organized and set up and start putting this model together. I first tried to curve the edges before folding them down using the step mandrel. The sides are so thin it barely made a difference as they easily knocked out of shape. There are four part threes, all of them shaped into a square and attached to part one. I bent these tabs outwards to keep from blocking other slots.
adding on part 4 was a little delicate. There is really no room to twist the tabs, so I worked to bend them over. It took me a few minutes to manage it as I struggled to hold the part in place and bent the tabs without knocking part 4 out of place. We need to make four of these outer wheel sections. Instead of breaking out the socket set, I used some glue sticks to shape part 15.
I did step 3 in a different order. I curved part 15 and attached it to 14, repeating for all 6 inner wheel sections. Then, after finishing all 6, I went back and curved and attached part 13. Be sure to attach 13 to the non-colored or engraved side of 14, and attach part 15 to the engraved or colored side of 14. For part 17, I would like to be a bit more aggressive and bend the tabs very close to the edge of the inner circle, but I can't get too close or try too much harder or risk bending the circle out of shape. If I could make the bend tighter, I probably would have had an easier time lining up all the tabs with their slots, but to keep from warping the wheel, I have to struggle a little to get the tabs lined up. Don't forget to bend up that one tab on the front. Be sure to line up the large black section with both front and back. Repeat three more times to make four wheel assemblies for step four. Step five is almost identical to step four. The only difference, other than you need to only repeat once for the two wheels, is that there's not a tab on the front to bend up.
I had to use thinner tweezers to twist the inside tab. The large pair would grab both tabs, not just one. I forgot to mention with the other side, but make sure the outer wheels are from step 4 and have the tab sticking out on the front side and that the center wheel is from step 5 and does not have a tab. The instructions indicate to fold these two tabs, which I want to do, but for now they are the only two tabs holding these larger sections together. I am going to lightly twist them for now and come back later.
If you are having a difficult time seeing what I am doing, so was I. These parts are painted in such a deep black that it just sucks up all the light and makes it a bit difficult to see slots and tabs.
I did my best to put a slight curve on one side of part 41, using the flat nose pliers by bending a little close to the fold line, moving down a little, bending a little more. I had some trouble getting part 41 lined up and attached. I had to make several adjustments. I cut a lot of the adjustments out to shorten the video. And now to push the top circular part down. Repeat two more times to make three lamps.
For the other side, step 11, I decided to fold out the long rail arm part first to get it out of the way of curving the side part. Oops, bent that the wrong way. In a rather rare occurrence, all the tabs fell right into place. That's it for part one of this beautiful model. We've got the undercarriage pretty much constructed and some wheels prepped and ready. Time to start working on the tank and the top half and back part and bringing it all together. You'll see that in part two. If it's not up already, it will be very soon. Thank you for watching and keep on keeping on.